Hello, it's Scott Matley here with part two of my tutorial for complete beginners on Kerbal Space Program Career Mode. I have unlocked a bunch of science. I have 43 science to spend, and what am I going to spend it on? Well, these two groups, the General Rocketry and the Stability Group, between them would cost me 38. That would be nice to unlock these two groups, but... If I look down at the bottom, we have this um, science technology group, and it has the science junior unit. Now, unlocking science really helps because it means you can do more science on each mission, which means you can get more things quicker. So I really want to unlock this, but it needs 45 science. I have 43. However, there's some science we haven't got yet that we can actually uh, do. We can go to the launch pad and build... A rather, you know, very simple vehicle. We can take, oh, we can take this. We can slam a mystery goo containment unit on the side. And we can launch it just like that. Because remember, the launch pad is its own biome. So uh, as I come out onto the launch pad, I can just do science there. I can look and say, hey, what's going on here? So let's do a crew report. It says, oh, well, we've already done that for a previous mission. We don't need to do that. But we can observe the mystery goo and say that it doesn't seem to be doing much right now. But it is making science. I'm going to make three science if I recover it. Uh, incidentally, if I transmit this, I will only get 30% of that, which means 0.9 science. And uh, when you transmit this or take the science out of it, it is no longer operable. So you can only do this once per mission at least right now. So anyway, we're going to take that home because home is where we already are. Let's uh, EVA out and get a report. Uh, oh yeah, we're flying over Kerbin Shores. We still have a little bit of science to get there. And if I just store that in there, store the experiments, we should be able to get an EVA report from standing on the surface. Report from Launchpad. I don't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary to get here. We can take a surface sample. The surface is charred and coated with burnt rocket propellant. There are also trace amounts of a conspicuous green substance. That's all very good. We could plant a flag, but it would be obliterated the next time we did a rocket launch. So we've grabbed a handful of science. We can recover the vessel and now head back to the R&D building to, of course, unlock that node with the fancy science junior that we wanted. So down here, research it. That leaves me 14 science, not enough to grab one of these. But yes, we do have the science junior, which we can now do use to do more science. Technically, we could just do another one of these with the science junior sitting on the launch pad. Uh, but we're not going to do that. Now, one thing I kind of covered in the previous episode was using symmetry. And I'm going to do a quick little bit on symmetry once again. So we're going to build a very simple rocket once more. Attach this on the bottom. Uh, do a rocket here. Actually, let's, uh, let's do the smaller one for simplicity's sake. Look at this. We're going to have the liquid fuel engine. And we'll put a parachute on because this is a a highly important scientific experiment and we do not want to uh, kill our Kerbals while doing so. Now, looking at this, we can actually go down into the bottom left and there's these center of mass, center of lift and center of thrust markers. Now, if I do that, the center of mass shows up. That is the center of, you know, that's what the thing will rotate around. Now, as this fuel burns, incidentally, You'll notice if I go in, if I right click on the object, I can adjust the amount of fuel in it. You'll see that as the fuel burns, the mass of this object changes and the center of mass moves. Now, similarly, if I grab something and stick it on the side, you'll just try this here. You see that it jumps just a little. That's because adding the mass to the side is adjusting the center of mass. So if I put one of these things on there without using symmetry, this thing is going to be ever so slightly off center. The center of thrust comes straight through this. And if this center of mass is offset from the center of thrust, then the vehicle will experience a rotation force. We're just going to try flying this just to demonstrate this and see it in action. I'm not going to turn on stability control for this time. Stability control, of course, being enabled with the T key. I'm just going to try flying this, and you're going to see right away that uh, it doesn't want to keep going straight. There we go. So we start to turn. Whoa, there. Oh, let's jettison. I lost control right away. Not good. <laughs> 
we can actually, of course, revert flight back to launch, and perhaps I can fly it a little better this time by paying attention. Okay, so this thing is sitting on the launch pad, and as it goes up, it's going to want to turn to the right. So I'm going to have to press the A key occasionally to stop it going to the left, to make it go to the left. Let's just throttle up, and we'll watch this happen. And there it goes, turning off to the left. So let's turn the other way, and that should actually keep us going straight. Now, the force, incidentally, in case you're wondering, if you're an engineer, the force is actually coming from the capsule. The capsules have a magical reaction wheel system in it, which um, lets the vehicle rotate through... Well, it's magic. It's really not realistic. If I right-click on this and toggle the torque, then the keys now no longer work, and the thing will spin around until it runs out of fuel. Uh, I can toggle the torque back on if I'm fast, and hopefully get this back under control. No. Nope says react oh, reaction wheels are still disabled there we go aha now it's enabled again so that is how spacecraft fly at least at this level once you get further into the game you can get um reaction control thrusters which are little thrusters designed for rotation and if you're building aircraft you can have flaps and other things to help you and of course i can just ditch this and let the pilot return but we're not that interested in this i was mostly showing how important asymmetry is, or important symmetry is. Okay, so we're going to build ourselves a small suborbital capable spacecraft, right? We want to get, for our next achievement, we will attempt to get above 70 kilometers, which is the threshold between the sky, the air, and space. It is the equivalent, the Kerbal equivalent, of the Carman line, which is on Earth is 100 kilometers. So I'm just building a spacecraft with an instrumentation package attached to it. This will land safely, and obviously I have to make sure it's symmetric. So I'm going to press X, and that gives us two of these. We're going to make sure it lands safely by adding some legs. So press X again, and you see that we've got three times symmetry. So put these legs here, and that will cushion my landing somewhat. It should make sure that I'm okay to hit the ground at a reasonable pace. Uh, okay, so next we're going to add just a small upper stage here to help us. We're building a two-stage rocket this time instead of a one-stage rocket. We could do a suborbital hop with a single-stage uh, vehicle, but I am really kind of want to show you how to do multi-stage rockets. So here we go. We've got this, this. We get two tanks in the bottom. This is another thing to realize I haven't pointed out yet is that when you stack multiple fuel tanks on top of each other in Kerbal Space Program, the fuel flows down from this tank into this tank into the engine. So this engine has access to all this fuel by stacking it. Now, these parts, these uh, separators, the, the stack separators, those do not allow fuel to pass through them. Neither do engines. So the fuel from this tank does not automatically pass to this engine. The fuel from this tank is only available to that engine. Later on, there are other ways to adjust the rules of this, but right now we're just gonna we're gonna use this as a two-stage rocket. Before we launch this rocket, we should check by mousing over it to make sure on the right we want to, or we make sure our staging diagram works. First the engine, then the separator, then the next engine, then this other separator, and then the parachute. Brilliant! We're ready to go to space. We're ready to become the first kerbal in space and this mission is really really easy it doesn't involve any flying uh it does involve the possibility of dying but you know kerbals take that in their stride so hold the shift key to throttle up to 100 percent press t to enable sas and you see the little sas light coming on and uh, then hit space and we will go straight up you see our pat our shadow there as we head skywards at a really high velocity. Now, we have two goo canisters. We're going to collect one piece of goo data in space, but the second one I'm going to collect from the upper atmosphere. Well, we're just going to do time acceleration here. Double time will uh, mean that we actually get upwards a little faster. Now, Jebediah doesn't need to do anything. He just needs to sit still and watch. He can actually look at the spacecraft from inside if he likes. Not that interesting, but uh, there it goes nevertheless. <laughs> Once we get up high enough, 
hit the space bar twice and that second engine fires. You see that we are going pretty fast upwards, I guess. We're now uh, going at almost 400, 480, 500 meters per second. So, uh, now we're up in the upper atmosphere, we can actually do some science while we're flying. We're going to do a crew report. And it's, uh, we get some more science for that. We can do a mystery goo report. The goo seems to be getting very cold right now. Now we could do this, but we can only use the materials bay once. And it will be worth more if we do it once we're in space. And so the engine cuts out before we actually reach space. But now we're actually floating in space. Now, I would advise right now pressing F5 uh, to try and stop, well, to, to save the game. F5, there you go, it says quick saving. You have to cut the engines before you save the game. Now if you get into trouble you can hold F9 and reload. So uh, let's do the science first of all. Observe the materials bay. The microgravity has greatly affected the growth of crystalline structures. Loose objects are flying around the bay in a messy but fascinating way. Let's keep that data. Observe the mystery goo. The goo seems to have clumped into a sphere. It also appears to have become brittle. Now, we want to do a crew report, but we already have a crew report. So we need to do the old trick where we remove the report from the capsule. Unless, of course, you're running some extra version. So this is why I saved it. You're going to go on an EVA with Jebediah. And it's entirely possible that he floats off the spacecraft and you need to get back in. In which case, you might have some trouble. Now... I'm going to grab the data, take the data, and then I'm going to do an EVA report, and then I'm going to store the data. Now, we're still going upwards. We have a little bit of time, so I'm going to press space to let go and just show you. Press L to turn on the lights. Now, right now, you can't move. None of the motion keys do anything, but if you press R, you see his jetpack comes on, and facing the spacecraft, you can press S to move backwards. You can move left and right using A and D, and W moves you forwards. Shift moves up, control moves down, and generally you want to just be as slow as possible because moving fast is going to end up putting you a long way from the spacecraft, potentially while you're plummeting back to Earth, which is never a good thing. But I've done all the science I can. I'm going to board the spacecraft just as we reach the highest point going to get that crew report as well. It seems we are very much in space right now. The sky seems mostly below us. Let's keep that data. So we've got a little bit of time. Let's take a look at the map by pressing the M key. Bring up the nav ball so we can see what's going on. So important thing to note here is that although we went straight up, it actually looks more like a ballistic arc. And the reason for this is when we started going straight up, we were on a rotating object. The space center was here when we launched, but the planet is rotating, so the space center has now moved to here. So that's why we are moving slightly sideways. As it happens, by the time we land, the space center will probably have moved even further, and that's all to do with conservation of angular, angular momentum. We'll probably actually land to the west of the space center, assuming we went straight up. I haven't changed anything here. But uh, this is just a consequence of moving in a rotating reference frame. We're also falling towards the surface. I'm going to press space to jettison that part of the spacecraft. And let's time accelerate. Now you can time accelerate faster. Here's me going 10 times time acceleration. You can go up to 100,000 when you're in space. As soon as you hit the atmosphere, it resets you back to 1. And now we're going to fall down. So let's... Again, do some more time accelerating. There's me going at four times time acceleration. In a moment, we're going to hit the atmosphere, so let's slow down and watch this. Now, as spectacular as this looks, in the current version 0.23, it just looks pretty. It doesn't really have an effect. You can see the gravity, uh, the G-meter here is showing very high because of the force of deceleration. That has been known to break spacecraft, but it's very unlikely that you'll have to be worried about it. So uh, now we're falling towards the surface. I would hit space once you're below a couple of kilometers. That will deploy the parachute. And for landing, you probably want to press G to deploy the landing gear. 
That way these will hit the ground before the experiments and that means that you will not just have any chance of destroying the experiments because after that you know historic jaunt into space it would be rather disappointing if you destroyed all the science because you couldn't land. So now the parachute is open we'll just do a little bit of time accelerating to get down to the surface. You don't need to do this but I'm just doing it so I can get through the game as quickly as possible and touchdown there we are back on the surface and i suspect that we are already in we're in on grasslands again but let's let's try this we'll just do an eva oh and he fell off well can we get an eva report from somewhere yeah this is grasslands we already have a grasslands eva report so there's nothing no more science there's a little more science in uh doing recovering a surface sample and of course we could plant a flag but that's all going to take time keep that data recover the vessel and let's see what we've got in terms of science from this little jaunt into suborbital space so we got a little from him but of course we still have the spacecraft itself to recover which i've helpfully named untitled spacecraft recover that and we now have a total of 83 science Let's see what that will buy us. I'm going back to the R&D center to see what new and fascinating offers, what brilliant offers they have available to us. Now, this is something we should be aspiring to, this next experimental level, because it contains the thermometer. It also contains the mobile processing lab, which I will discuss in a future episode. That was a new addition in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. This takes 90 science, I have 83. I could probably get a little more by going to the runway. But realistically, we have, you know, some stuff lower down the tree that we want. We definitely want general rocketry, and we definitely want stability. Now, we have 45. We could unlock any one of these, but truthfully, there's not that much interesting stuff going on here. I uh, I think... I Actually, yeah, let's, let's unlock... Let's unlock the winglet because, yeah, let's unlock the winglet because this adds a whole bunch of new things here. Research. Okay. So with that, I think that's a good place to end. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.